of these young ladies is the star of the Broadway hit musical, My Fair Lady. What is your name, please? My name is Margot Moser. My name is Margot Moser. My name is Margot Moser. Only one of these young ladies is the real Margot Moser. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Betty White, and Johnny Carson. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, fight depression, calm jittery nerves. Anison. Hi, panel. Hi, Bud. Oh, Hi, As Bud. you undoubtedly notice, there are only three of you tonight. The reason oh, really? for that will become clearer in the next few minutes. So, will you please open your envelopes, take out your affidavit card for the first time, and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Margot Moser, am an actress and singer. I am currently playing the part of Eliza Doolittle, the feminine lead in the record-breaking Broadway hit musical, My Fair Lady. I am the first American-born girl to star in the part in the New York Company. Incidentally, when Tom Poston, Betty White, and Johnny Carson have decided which one of us is me, I will join them as a panelist for the rest of the program. Signed, Margot Moser. may be concerned, may I say that Margot Moser has been playing the part of Eliza Doolittle since uh, last March, and none of our panelists has ever seen her in the part. All right, with that little bit out of the way, let's begin this first round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, Bud. Uh, let me see. Uh, number three, uh, Miss Moser, uh, who is married to your director? Kitty Carlisle. Kitty Carlisle? My goodness. That's a likely story. Yeah. Listen, uh, number two, can you tell me what current bestseller your director has uh, written? Um, his autobiography right now. N number one, what's the name of that? I'm sorry, I'm not going to say. That's a great title. <laughs> That's a good title. I'm sorry, I'm not going to say. Well, I don't think it was that. Do you know number three? Act one. Thank you. I told him that I was going to write a book called Act Three, but I was afraid it would be injurious <laughs> to him, so I went... Uh, Betty. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two, what would upper stage left on our stage here be tonight? Upper stage right. No, I said upper stage left. Where would oh, it be? Oh, excuse me. In, In positioning right now. That's right, that's on right. This stage. To my right. And uh, upper stage left would be where on our stage tonight, number one? It would be behind me. Oh, you're a sneak. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what costume do you wear when you sing? I could have danced all night. A uh, green skirt and a white blouse. Uh, Number two, where do you sing this? Uh, positioning on the stage, how do you sing I could have danced all night? Uh, in Mr. Higgins' library and close by the uh, chaise lounge. Uh, Number one, is that completely true? Yes, that's true. Number three, do you agree with that? <laughs> yes. Uh, Johnny. You know, I'm probably the only person alive who's never seen My Fair Lady in any production at all. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, number two, Miss Moser, uh, how much did the movie rights to My Fair Lady just sell for? Five and a half million dollars. Number three, do you agree to that? Yes. Number one, what is a key light? A key light? I'm sorry, I don't know. Number two, what's a key light? Neither do I know. Number three, what, what is a key light? I don't know either. Oh it lights your key late at night when yeah. you're trying to get it. <laughs> That's probably your case, not mine. Uh, number number one, what is abroad? Watch it. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, let Bud ask. Abroad is overseas in Europe. What did you think? I didn't say a thing. Huh? Number one. I'm sorry. Isn't that something out of uh, South Pacific? <laughs> <laughs> South Pacific and dripping wet, too. All right. The time has come, the water is said, to talk of many things, and the least of them not is to mark your ballots right now, if you will, please. So do so. Panel, without consultation, 
Just simply mark your ballots and vote for number one. Honestly. Number two or number three. As is our custom, of course, the team of challenges will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Are we all voted? Everybody? Johnny, Betty, Tom, Tom, for whom did you vote? Did they get an incorrect one right away? No, you'll see how this works out. She disqualifies herself because you, she you must see. know, right? Okay. I voted for number one because uh, she knew where uh, upper left... Where is upper left stage? <laughs> we, we left it at home, but I voted for number one anyway. Betty. Well, I don't know. I, I think I'd like to have any one of these three yeah. gals join us on the panel over here. We're lonesome. <laughs> but I voted for number three on the strength of Act One. Of that what? On the strength of Act One, I voted Act for one. number three. Right. Opposition to number one. I just didn't hear because the bell rang when you said it, and I didn't hear you say your reason. Because I Johnny. thought number one was a three. <laughs> I uh, voted for number two. <laughs> that splits it right down the middle, doesn't because it? Huh? I'd like to get under that hat with her. <laughs> Can't say as I blame you. <clears throat> All right, there we have it. Now we come to our own particular moment of truth, which we do each week at this time. Time when we find out whether we're right or wrong in the way we have voted, and the time when we discover which one of these ladies really is playing the lead, the lead part of Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady. So will the real Margot Moser please... Stand up. Go blimey, one of us better get up. met our panel, so may I do the formalities that your immediate uh, stage right, lower <laughs> stage right, is, uh, maybe we better call him John E. Carson tonight. Hello. Hello, you, Margaret. Nice and to next to him is our lovely Betty White. Hello. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And down at the end there, last but by no means least, Tom right. Foster. How do you do? Nice to have you with us. It certainly is. It's a real treat. Let's find out about these other two lovely ladies who really did a magnificent job, you have to admit, having split the vote right down the way it did. Can we Number get one. them on the panel, too, bud? I mean, <laughs> no. They'd be nice, though, wouldn't they? Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Emily Ann Purcell. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, a clerk in New York offices, and I've never been on the professional stage in my life. <laughs> And uh, number two, what about you? My name is Barry Reisdorf. I'm a housewife, mother of two children, and neither have I been on the stage before. <laughs> Boy, they, uh, they really deserve your applause, believe me. Hey, by the way, I just noticed we have only three votes, and that seems hardly fair. It should be four, broken out somewhere. Well, I'll tell you what. Margo, you are now officially a member of our panel. So, suppose you cast a vote. You tell us which one you think is the real Margo Moser. <laughs> well, I happen to know that the real Margo Moser was number one. <laughs> number one. All right. We'll rack up a vote for number one, and that'll make the take that much higher. Uh, in checking things over, of course, we find now that there are one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $750 for the team. And we, I can't tell you how happy we are that you were with us. You did a beautiful job. We had a good time, and I hope you did, too. Thank you, thank you. You'll also receive a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Annis. And good night, and bless you. And let me I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is John J. McGee. My name is John J. McGee. My name is John J. McGee. Follow along again, panel, if you will, please, with your copies of this affidavit. I, John J. McGee, am senior control man aboard the U.S. Sub Navy submarine Char. On September 26, the Char was running submerged about 100 feet below the surface when a rubber coupling broke. In 90 seconds, 30 tons of seawater poured into the motor room. My partner and I slammed the watertight doors, sealing ourselves inside the flooding compartment. Somehow, we managed to pull the switches to apply full power to surface the boat and start the pumps. When the submarine shot for the surface at a 40-degree angle, the water became more than 15 feet deep at one end of the motor room. Had it reached the electrical panel, we might have been electrocuted instantly. Our skipper has recommended that we both be cited for our action during this emergency. 
Signed, John J. McGee. Now, you heard three gentlemen this time panel, each one claiming to be John J. McGee, submarine hero. We start this cross-examination with Betty White. Betty? Thank you, bud. And I don't care which one it is. I'm very privileged to be on the same stage with you, and it's a privilege to meet you. I read the story in, in the paper, and I probably looked at your picture, and I hate myself because I really don't know which one it is. Uh, number three, what is your partner's name? Douglas Webster. Number two, what is your partner's name? Douglas Webster. I'm not going to get anywhere there. Number one, uh, what are submarines generally named after? Fish. Fighting fish. Fighting fish? Number two, where does the, uh, the submarine, U.S. Navy submarine char? Out of what port does she sail? San Diego is our home port. Number three, how long have you been aboard a member of the crew of submarines? Three years. Johnny. Uh, number two, what's the difference between roll and pitch? Roll is sideways and pitch is forward and aft. Number one, what is the difference between a roll and list? List is, is a lean caused by uh, too much ballast on one side. Number three, what is the corresponding rank in the Army to a Lieutenant J.G. in the Navy? Number two, what's the corresponding rank to a Lieutenant J.G. in the Army? First Lieutenant. That's, that's correct, First Lieutenant. You agree to that? J.G., you said. I didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trapping for you. Number, uh, number three, how many feet in the phantom? Six feet. Number two? Six feet. Margot. Um, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> glad I wasn't you. Uh, number two, how big was, uh, is the, uh, was the watertight compartment that you were locked into? It's about 20 feet long. And how high? Well, it's about 15 feet in diameter. Oh, I see. Um, number one, was this an atomic submarine? No, no. It wasn't. Was anybody else on board, number one? Aboard the submarine? Yes. Oh, yes, the entire crew. Uh, well, number three, if, if everybody else was on board, why did you have to put the, get hold of all the switches to have everything go to the surface? Doesn't somebody else do this? That was my duty at the time. Oh, I see. <laughs> Things you learn. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, uh, ordinarily, where do orders originate in a submarine? What's the name of that? Uh, control room. And control. Uh, number two, was it necessary for you to notify the control room and ask for them to give the signal to uh, surface? Yes, sir. We, we notified them. Number three, did you do that without giving the signal to surface yourself? <laughs> through throwing no, the control? Not. Pardon me? I did not. I received the signal. Number three, do you know what uh, type of electrical current repels on contact? If you grab a live wire, what type of electrical current will throw you away from the wire? Do you know? DC. Uh, I asked somebody else. Uh, uh, where was number two? That's it. Right there with that last shocking question. We have to stop, think things over, and decide which is which as we mark our ballots. Will you do so now, please, panel, without consultation, and vote as you do for number one. Number two, or number three? All ballots marked? No, I, I, I didn't mark it. Yeah, I'm just sore loser. Son of a gun. <laughs> uh, All right, Tom, for whom? I don't think it's him. <laughs> I was forced to vote. <laughs> Under I pressure. really don't think it's him. Benny, hey, which team. one did you select? I think number one had tremendous answers, but I voted for number two on the strength of the fact that he unhesitatingly said in diameter, and I imagine the interior of a submarine would be round rather than high and wide. <laughs> John. I never thought of that. <laughs> I was in the Navy for three years, but uh, on our side, incidentally, so... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to guess for, guess for one. Number yeah? one? Vote number one. Okay. Yeah. Margot, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I think number one, only because he's got his coat on. He looks so nautical and just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see how well we all did now. The votes being in, the minds made up, whether we're right or wrong, and just which one is the hero of that submarine accident that proved to be salvaged very nicely by his actions. So will the real John McGee please stand up? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Everybody fool. What's the matter, Johnny? Oh. Uh, well, you can see what I did for our country when I was... <laughs> All right. Of him. Well, that went right down there. Now, number one, you got the most vote. Let's find out about you now. What, uh, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? My name is Edward Leonard, and I'm an assistant professor of history at Iona College in New Rochelle. I was never... <laughs> I was never in, the, uh, never in the Navy, but in the Marine Corps. You were in the Marine Corps. Number two, maybe have your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Dave Caldwell. I'm assistant to the treasurer of the International Paper Company. <laughs> Well, John McGee, I may echo what Betty White said. We are very proud to have you on the show. Congratulations on your feet of bravery. You certainly deserve it. <laughs> Not much difficulty in checking on the score. <laughs> Gentlemen, you really pulled a killing here. There were four incorrect votes all the way down the line. 250 each for a grand total, and it's the first time in a good many weeks on the show, of $1,000 from Anderson, as well as a gift package from the makers of Anderson. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, good night. Good, maker, right? good luck to you. Bless you all. <laughs> Comes now, panel, our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Richard Smith. <laughs> My name is Richard Smith. My name is Richard Smith. Again, follow along, panel. You've had a look. Now give a listen. I, Richard Smith, am a hairdresser. About four years ago, one of my customers, a lady wrestler, suggested that I take up her profession on a part-time basis. I took her advice. I now work in a beauty parlor Monday through Friday, and on weekends I wrestle professionally under the name of Gorgeous George Smith. Signed, Richard Smith. <laughs> This time, panel, you heard three gentlemen, each one claiming to be a combination of hairdresser, beautician, and wrestler, Richard Smith. And we start with our own wrestler, uh, Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about me. I used to watch me nights. <laughs> we didn't even have television, either. Uh, <laughs> number three, what's a, uh, what's a rat? Beg your pardon? What's a rat? A rat. A rat? A rat. What's a rat? A rat is usually my opponent that I wrestle against every Saturday night. <laughs> uh, now we're getting someplace. <laughs> Number one, what is a rat? A rat is classified as a villain. Number two, what's a rat? I agree with number one. <laughs> really? Well, <laughs> let's get back to wrestling. Um, <laughs> Number one, what's a hammerlock? How, hammer do you, how do you execute a hammerlock? Hammerlock is executed by placing the arm and back and twisting it upward and holding it there and applying pressure. Mm -hmm. Margo Moses. I know nothing about wrestling either. <laughs> uh, in hairdressing, no, number two, in hairdressing, what's a French twist? Uh... <laughs> It's combed to the back of the head, and it's wrapped over to one side, tucked in with bobby pins. Number three, uh, in hairdressing, what is a rat? It's my opponent every Saturday. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, number one, uh, how many matches have you played? I haven't played matches. Matches? What do you call them in wrestling games? <laughs> games? What are they? Matches. 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 Uh, listed as exhibition. Oh, sorry. And I've had 54. Um. Tom, uh, number one, what is uh, stripping hair? Stripping hair is removal of all the color before applying a new color. Thank you. Number two, what is teasing hair? <laughs> teasing hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you comb the part of the hair back to the scalp. Number three, what is strip teasing hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's when a rat panelist asks you a dumb question like that, right? Uh, number, number three, why is rosin used in the ring? 
Rosalyn is not used in the ring. Is not supposed to be used in the ring. Not in wrestling. Thank you, I think. Now, what's a rat? Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, aside from the vegetable, what is an artichoke? A hairstyle. Uh, number three, what was the wrestler, the lady wrestler's name? Well, I'll tell you, I wrestled down in Louisiana, and the lady wrestler that tells the title right now is... Um, uh, number I one, just don't know. what was the lady wrestler who recommended that you go into wrestling? What was her name? Fabulous Moolah. Fabulous. There's a lady wrestler named Betty White, is why I asked. You just never know. I mean, That's another a one. <laughs> All right. Time has come for you to mark your rat, uh, your ballot. So will you please do so, panel, without any consultation? Hmm. Just simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. Gee, I. I can I I just changed mine, but I promise you I won't do it again. All right. Okay, all ballots marked. Very well, Tom. Uh, what is your changed well, ballot? Here, here's what I did. I had two, right? Yeah. But I changed that. I don't want that. Okay. One here. And uh, the reason that I changed it was because I suddenly remembered that number one really did know the answer to stripping hair, and I don't think he would have known that if he hadn't been a beautician, would he? <laughs> Betty. After the second round tonight, I'm afraid to open my mouth. I said number one on the straight. Number two had wonderful answers. He knew what teasing yeah. hair yeah. was. And shame on him. But number one did no stripping. <laughs> yeah. Johnny. I voted for number three. <laughs> Every barber or hairdresser I know is bald. <laughs> And Margot, which one did you select? Well, I voted for number one, only I guessed again. I guess he knew the most about hairdressing. Okay, there we have it then. We have, let's see, uh, Tom and uh, Johnny and Margot all agree on number one. And uh, Johnny goes for number three. Okay, no votes for number two. Well, let's find out right now whether we're right or wrong, in the soup or out of it, and which side of the fence as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real combination hairdresser wrestler. Will the real Richard Smith. Please stand up. I beg pardon? Why didn't he know what a rat was? Well, it could well be that his, his thoughts were on wrestling at the time. However, I'll ask him, why did you not know what a rat was, Margo? Uh... If I'm not mistaken, I think they were used before I went into the profession. Oh! Well, they're not called a rat anymore. What, what, uh, is, what is the same thing called? It's a false hair it's piece, isn't it? Rat. False hair that you put in to stuff a Fill hair roll, out. you know, make yeah. it look fatter. What well, is it we call it a transformation or a hair Transformation. Piece. Wow. Oh. There you are. Well, it's a little more out of date. <laughs> 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 find it. Now, number one, who you've got the most votes. Uh, what is your name and what rat do you really do? My name is John L. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the sales rep of the Nationalism Incorporated, makers of the famous jockey wear, underwear, and sportswear. Thank you. And number three, you got one vote, bald beautician that you were called. What is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Y. Tittle. I'm an insurance broker in Palo Alto, California. <laughs> an insurance broker. <laughs> Fortunately, good times go too fast, and our time is up for now. That's all we have time for. Margo, thank you very much for being with us. I hope you had a good time. I had a marvelous time, bud. Thank you. It was our pleasure and honor to have you on the show, both as a contestant and as a panelist. You were great. Thank you. Good night, panel. Good night, bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Anderson and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth has been brought to you tonight by this stand, the congestion tablet, the new three-layer tablet for effective relief, sinus congestion, hay fever, and cold distress.